My trays are a bit knackered, but I love them. It just shows they think, can I use the word knackered? <laughs> so, <laughs> they're a bit... <laughs> My trays are a bit old and <laughs> rusty. This is it guys, this is the one you have all been waiting for. I've given you some kefta, I've given you dolma, I've given you food and kebab. Now I'm gonna give you chips <laughs> because they have to be my most popular, well one of my most popular recipes and they are my crunchy baked chips. They are foolproof, they're beautiful, they're baked, they are crispy, they've got a lovely coating and they are super simple to make as long as you follow the method from start to finish as I'm about to show you now. So here we go, Melis Cook's Crunchy Baked Chips. So you start by heating up some oil in a tray. So I've already preheated my oven. It's on 220 degrees Celsius in a fan oven. So if you're not using a fan assisted oven, make sure it's at roughly 230 to 240 degrees centigrade, as high as your oven can almost go basically. So I'm going to add two tablespoons of either, you can use sunflower or vegetable or rapeseed oil, but any of those and give your tray a little swirl. Okay, so once you've swirled your oil round in your battered tray like mine, um, just pop it in the oven. And so while you're prepping the potatoes, this will heat up. So it just give that extra sizzle when the potatoes hit the pan. So heat the tray up on the top shelf so that you've got maximum heat in there. But when you roast the potatoes, roast them on the middle shelf so that they don't get too crispy too soon and then obviously burn. So I've got here four medium sized baking potatoes. Basically, you don't want the potatoes to overcrowd your tray. If you feel like the amount of potatoes you have, well, these are pretty average medium sized potatoes. If you're worried that the amount of potatoes you have is going to overcrowd your tray, then put two trays in the oven. Okay, so it's as simple as that. This should be absolutely fine in terms of content, but you want the chips spread out evenly, not over each other, not on top of each other. Otherwise the edges aren't going to crisp up and they're not going to be crunchy baked fries, which is what they are. So cut them roughly into about two centimeter thick chips, both in width and in length big and it doesn't matter again some are a little thicker than others but as even as you can I love these bits where you get a bit of kind of extra skin on them that crisp up sometimes what I do as well if I feel like I've got a bit of a wonky one I can slice off the edges but do not throw those away they go straight in there as well so I use either baking potatoes Maris Pipers or King Edward potatoes. So any one of those really would suffice. It's kind of standard white potatoes or salad potatoes, not for this recipe. As long as you follow the method and the recipe to a tea, and you have gorgeous crunchy baked potatoes. I've had hundreds of people share their posts with me and it's amazing. It's lovely to see how a recipe that we love at home and I regularly cook for the kids, they love these chips. Um, Kind of, I see other people cooking them for their own families as well, which is great. So there are the potatoes um, sliced up now. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give them a little dry pat. You don't want the potatoes to be wet or really have any moisture content on them um, other than oil, really. And oil's not moisture. Oil is there to crisp up the potatoes. So just give them a nice dry pat, which is perfect. I mean, you can do it one by one. Who's got time for that, let's be honest. I'm doing it one by one then, after what I said, but that should be absolutely fine. And I can smell the oil in the oven, in the tray, just coming up to that kind of heat that I need it to be. This one's bugging me a bit, should I cut it? Should I cut it a bit? What do you reckon? Maybe. Mm. What does my gut say? My gut, says, my gut says, there we go, there we go. I can sleep now tonight, which is good. Right, so next thing to do, is to chuck in eight bashed garlic cloves. Now leave them with their skins on because they'll be visible in the dish so you'll be able to pick them out. Unless you're me and my dad and you eat them straight out of the skins. Bash them, chuck them, put them in. And a little baby one for luck. So because these potatoes aren't parboiled, they need that additional coating to them so that they crisp up in the oven. Although the oil is heating up in the oven and I'm going to put some extra olive oil on them, they still need a component that will do that and that is going to be 
in the form of corn flour. So I've got two tablespoons of corn flour here and that goes straight in. That goes in before the oil goes in so that you're not left with a floury exterior to the potatoes. So chuck that all over. And give everything a really, really good stir. I mean, if you really want to, as long as your hands are clean and washed, you can get your hands involved as well, of course, which is fine. At this stage. And what you're looking for is once, and give yourself some time to do this, because you do want to make sure that every bit of each potato is coated in as much corn flour as possible. And you want all the corn flour as much as it can be from the bottom of the dish to be all over the potatoes. And then what happens after this, then we can add the olive oil to the corn flour and fully amalgamate the oil and the flour together. So it almost forms some kind of paste. So that when that paste on the edge of the um, edges of the potatoes hits the oil, the hot oil in the pan, that's when you get your really crunchy baked chips. That looks good to me. So the next thing you're going to do is add two tablespoons of olive oil. Now, don't add any more than that. You might be tempted to, because you might add it and think, oh gosh, I need to put some more in. There's not going to be enough oil to the corn flour. There will be, as long as you stir it for long enough. And the more oil you have in the pan, the more likely it could be that the potatoes don't crisp up as much because there's far too much oil in there. You're not deep frying the chips, um, they're going into a tray in the oven. So just give it, like I said, give it some love, give it some time and I just promise you the oil to corn flour content will be spot on. You can already see that kind of paste and those crusty edges as if you were to parboil the potatoes and then rough them up in a pan, it's starting to fall. Go look. Bought before. So, to be honest with you, I've always, because of my mum, um, cooked potatoes with some kind of additional ingredient that will aid the crisping up process. Mum would either put, when we were growing up, semolina or flour or corn flour into roast potatoes and really, really does give you that additional crisping. So, I'm happy now. I can't see any exposed corn flour. And then we'll just them again. So in goes some dried thyme and dried oregano. Again. All of that, a lovely stir. It smells great. And again, you want to give this a good stir so that you don't just have the herbs on one part of a potato or on just some of them and not all of them. Just make sure it's all evenly coated. Okay, now in goes your seasoning. So I'm going to just put in a generous pinch. I like using um, kind of coarse black pepper like this. So just give that not too much, about three quarters of a teaspoon there. Again, give everything a good stir. And the same with some lovely sea salt flakes that I've got here. So again, roughly kind of three quarters of a teaspoon. You can always obviously salt your chips more if you need to. I try to put um, with not too much salt, if I'm honest with you, and then um, you know people can kind of season accordingly as well. These now are pretty much good to go to me. Now you can tip the chips straight into the tray. Just be careful again if you're going to do that. My gut says, to not do it, but the kind of rebel side of me says to do it, which is ridiculous. But here we go, I'm gonna give it a little. The key is they've got to be separate, not touching if possible, nice and even in the tray so you get those lovely crispy bits. Now these are gonna go in the oven for about 30 to 40 minutes, halfway through. Make sure you turn them over, don't do it too early give it 20 minutes if it's possible, just so that they have enough time to cook underneath so that when you turn them over, they crisp already. So pop them in now, turn them over after 20 minutes, and then just check again after 30 and then 40 minutes. Okay, so the chips have been in now for an extra 20 minutes after I turn them halfway through, so they should be ready and crispy and crunchy. Let's have a look. Can you hear that? Can you hear that? 
There we go. I mean, they are. That is what you want to hear. When you bake chips, other than frying them, they want to have that crisp. Oh my gosh, that's got my name all over it, that one. Delicious, crunchy, herby, garlicky baked chips. And these beautiful morsels of skin, potato skin, that you do not throw away. They've got to go in there as well. I'm literally like swallowing as I'm serving it up. <laughs> there we go. I don't think I could be any happier right now knowing in circa three minutes I'm going to demolish these. Absolutely lush. I just need to try one of these little potato skins just, just to make sure that they're all right. <laughs> yeah, they're good. They're very good. <laughs> These are mine. <laughs> I'm gonna go in there. So if you enjoyed my video, please click and subscribe.